welcome to Mindscapes, our series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, visions and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is a contemporary spiritual master in the tradition of the ancient stage, sages of India. His teachings, his philosophy have impacted more than a million people in 90 countries. He embodies the highest aspirations of our heritage. I'm delighted to welcome Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. What is really uh, the goal, the, the aspiration uh, of a spiritual quest? Is it the pursuit of happiness? Indeed, indeed. So we are made up of both matter and spirit. All that we aspire, like peace, love, compassion, joy, they're all aspects of spirit, including comfort. What is this state of, of happiness represent? Happiness is the real nature of our consciousness. You know, usually, um, psychologists say deep inside you there is sadness, or there is sorrow, or there is misery, there is problem. But I would say you go a little deeper, and all that you find is your nature is to be in the moment. And is that? And that's happiness. That moment represents happiness. Right. Right. Would you sort of, um, uh, you know, describe it in 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 in, in the vocabulary, shall we say, of uh, the layperson who hasn't experienced the moment, who hasn't experienced the spirit? Uh, how could we point him to this possibility? Just look at a child, and he embodies all the aspects of spirit fully. And see, look at a child, how much uh, joy is in his uh, face, there is so much uh, love and sense of belongingness. And as a child gets education, somewhere he seems to be losing all these qualities which he is born with. I think that is not what education is meant for. Education has to keep the smile and the innocence, the love and the freedom a child experiences. And that needs to be fostered more and more. You have frequently uh, talked about this aspect of love and, and, and compassion as being sort of uh, intrinsic to a human being. Yet, uh, uh, when we look around us, we seem to see far more acts of, 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 of hatred, confrontation, competition and violence than we see of love. In fact, if you see um, all the problems in the world, they all come out of love only. That love gets distorted, it becomes hatred. And uh, when you love perfection and you are angry at imperfection, Greed, jealousy, anger, all these are distortion of love. But yet everyone longs for such a love that that's free from all these distortions. That's where wisdom or knowledge comes to play, which would help one to keep one's love as love and not become jealousy or hatred. This wisdom, how does one aspire to it? How does one seek it? How does one get it? Just look at life from a broader perspective, that's all. Look at life from a broader background of time and space. You know, the inquiry is, who am I? What do I want? All these questions can help one to uh, come to that level of... Uh, the Indian heritage has developed some of the most sophisticated uh, mind training techniques. Much of your work uh, has to do with training the breath. Uh, what is the relationship between breath and mind? You know, for every emotion, there is a definite rhythm in the breath. In fact, breath is the link between body and mind. So when you are angry, you breathe different. Huh? When you are happy, you breathe different. So every emotion has a definite rhythm. There is a rhythm in the nature. Seasons come in particular time. And there is a rhythm in our body. When there is harmony between the rhythm of the nature and the body, then you feel healthy in the body. And when there is a rhythm between body and mind, the thought process, emotions, 
and the breath, then there is more harmony in life. You are sort of most uh, intimately, at least in the, in the public sphere, uh, associated with, the, with your art of living courses. What is the art of living? Appreciating life. You know, learn to appreciate life more than matter or accessories to the life. So, life is both matter and spirit. And the spirit aspect of life is all our emotions, feelings, and something which is beyond that, the consciousness. You know, when you say that life is matter and the spirit, uh, there has been a great deal of uh, 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 new thinking, shall we say, uh, in, in, in Western psychology and, and the modern biochemistry of the brain, uh, whereby altering the biochemistry of the brain, you're able to change emotions. Uh, where does uh, spirit come in if in the act of popping a pill, you know, you take Prozac and you eliminate depression. If you're schizophrenic, you take something else. Uh, what, is the, what, what, is the, what is the sort of the, 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 the reasonable basis of the, or the basis in reason? Yeah, yeah. Spirit. Matter and spirit are interlinked. They are connected. Yeah, of course, you can take Prozac and get rid of your um, depression for a short period of time. But look at all the side effects that medicine can create in you. And then there is a lot of um, p patients have reported you know, when they take Prozac for a period of time, it stops working them anymore. Going from matter to spirit is a little gross, I think. So, but when you attend to spirit direct, then it can similarly influence our physiology too, our body too. You feel more energetic, and you feel more self-sufficient. And if you use your breath, you don't need to take Prozac and other pills. Just by altering the rhythm of the breath, you can alter the state of your mind. So are you suggesting that uh, through the process of working on your breath, it is possible to alter the biochemistry of the brain? Definitely, definitely, definitely. One of the sort of uh, perceived goals, shall we say, uh, of the spiritual quest that's held up is sort of, you know, nirvana. But if we pursue this, uh, we, will, we can each uh, attain nirvana in some ways. What is the state of nirvana? Have you experienced it? Do you have an insight into this? It's very personal experience of being nobody. You know, usually we are stuck with the position, I am somebody, I am somebody. And then suddenly you realize you are not somebody, you are nobody, and you are part of everybody, and you are everybody. Would you then sort of say that uh, this, this represents a, a feeling of uh, interconnectedness, uh, uh, merging with... See, when you say connectedness, you again feel there are two separate things, they are getting connected. Feel there is only one thing, only one thing, the whole, th yeah, it's only one thing, everybody is made up of this one thing. You know, our, our, our traditional practices uh, have suggested a sort of a hierarchical approach, shall we say, uh, to uh, the spiritual practice. So you have, you, you know, you have yama, niyama, you know, you have the different stages of this. And, and breath, or pranayama, comes somewhat later in this hierarchy. Uh, in, your, uh, in your teaching and in, in, in the systems that you have so effectively uh, used to impact so many people, is there a hierarchy? Do you sort of work? Do you only introduce people to the, to the higher levels of technique once they have mastered or demonstrated that they have mastered the lower levels? No, I, would, I wouldn't say it's a higher or lower level. It's a simultaneous work on our seven layers of our existence. No? Body, mind, breath, intellect, memory, ego, and the self. So the seven aspects of our life. And even a few minutes or a few understanding about each of these aspects that can bring a lot of freedom in one system. When you talk about freedom in the system, uh, the sort of the more enlightened, you know, when you look at uh, the lives of Krishna or the sort of the great masters and, 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 and the, the eloquent um, uh, testaments to our traditions, uh, they reach the stage of amorality in a sense, that the traditional moral framework and structures didn't apply to them. Um, would you say that, uh, uh, you know, by working on the breath, that in some way there is a falling off of this, uh, the need for a, a rigid moral structure? I wouldn't say that the moral structure would fall off. It becomes your nature. Morality is your nature. Nobody need to tell you you have need to be compassionate or caring. 
it's simply the way you are and you feel at home with everybody in the world you know all the barriers boundaries which seem to have been created by our um, you know modern society seem to simply drop off we come back to our child uh, like state what about your own uh, you know you you were um, you recalled uh, the bhagavad gita and you know when you were 4 years old um, you, you know you you were obviously a very exceptional child uh, have you been ever conscious that that you were different uh, to to your peers to people in the community in some ways and that you had this mission to teach and, and to help others yes uh, i didn't feel that i was very different from everyone else but i couldn't enjoy what other children used to enjoy like football and others and i used to in school you need to play some game but when the ball would come to me i would look at my feet i said i cannot kick anything in the world how can i kick this ball so i would just stand there staring at it so i had that uh, disadvantage some some aspects too <laughs> you were also sort of a, a, a student for for some time uh, of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Uh, what was the the interaction, the relationship, his influence on you? The love and um, the commitment to make a better society, ideal society. He was wonderful. Uh, he was so wonderful. He was uh, caring for all the people, and he used to plan. For how he can create an ideal society all the time what prompted you to uh, uh to self shall, shall we say uh you know branch out uh on your own uh with your own uh identity your own mission i didn't plan anything as such i just took 10 days of um, silence and afterwards kept teaching what i grasped you have uh, you know taught in 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 many different countries of the world you're a global teacher you've addressed the united nations uh, you've been on many uh, programs on television abroad do you find that the people from different uh, social and cultural contexts uh, need uh, a different set of teachings a different strategy different approaches uh, to fulfill themselves in in, in into the processes Uh, that you that you suggest all that, that they would like that all that they need to do is smile more mm -hmm. and people need this uh, world over to get back to their innocence often people who are intelligent they lose their innocence i would say the innocence of an intelligent person is very much valuable in this world today Would you then say that uh, it is not necessary or or useful to bring into play uh, the processes of logic and reason and that uh, that that this involves in 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 some ways a process of surrender because you're really seeking to transcend logic and reason so does does the assumptions of your, uh, your philosophy and the path uh does it need to stand up does it is does, that is 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 the aspirant Uh, asked us is it suggested to him that he should stand up to to reason and logic reason logic has its place definitely and reason logic makes the mind say yes <laughs> and when the whole consciousness comes to the state of yes then there is harmony mm -hmm. but yes to what uh, what 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 you saying yes it is to not yes to what is a state of being in a place yes what is the, the the possibility the hope i hate to use the word carrot uh, that that we might that we might hold out to the community uh, that that suffers that is in a state of uh, conflict uh, with each other that is exploiting the environment that is exploiting each other uh, what is it that we can say to them uh, hold out to them what what possibility uh, that we can hold out to them to draw them into this aspiration as you take a look at your own life If you are frustrated because you lack energy, and there are four sources of energy: food, right amount of food, first source of energy, and then proper sleep, right amount of sleep. If you sleep too much, then you feel tired, and if you don't sleep at all, then you feel tired. And the third source of energy is breath, which has been mostly neglected. The most neglected 
as pectin in our life. So, 90 percent impurities in our body goes out through the breath. So, we use only 30 percent of our lung capacity. We do not breathe enough, deep enough. So, few minutes of attending to the breath can energize a person and then a few minutes of meditation, a pleasant state of mind. You know, if you attend to these four different types of energy in our life, we can handle the frustration, stress, work pressure that one is faced today. Now, with this also needed a sense of belongingness. You know, today uh, the main question is there is so much corruption. What is the answer? How can we deal with the corruption? See, what is the problem with corruption? You do not make corruption with your own family members, with your, your near and dear one friends. When you feel that someone does not belong to you, then you can become corrupt. So, seeing life from a broader perspective, you know, sense of belongingness to the whole world all the population around you. Meditation is sort of, is, is a word widely used and abused and, and represents many different things. Uh, what and how would you explain meditation? Mm. Being with yourself. That sort of uh, involve watching your breath, just being. Is, is, is there a technique? Uh, is the aspect that you that you suggest uh, of working with the breath and the four elements uh, that you have mentioned? There are is many that methods of meditation. Many many methods of meditation. Uh, which you can transcend in any of the methods. You know, you can watch the sunset and just relax into yourself. That's the way of meditation. Observing the breath you can do singing. You know. In Hindi, you should say Nirvikar and Vishram. Effortlessness, totally at peace, in harmony with oneself. No? Effortlessness, first key for meditation. The second key word is faith, confidence. Okay. When you use the word faith, I, I come back again to this, this notion of surrender of reason. Why is it that we assume uh, in, in everyday conversation that faith? mean the suspension of reason in some ways. See, our doubt is always about something that is positive. Have you thought about it? You know, when someone tells you, I love you so much, you ask them, really? But when someone asks you uh, or makes a remark and says, I really hate you, you never ask them, do you really hate me? So we doubt that which is positive. We doubt the honesty of a person. We never seem to doubt the dishonesty of a person. So we doubt in our capability. We never doubt in our incapability. So I see there are three types of faith. One is faith in yourself and faith in the social structure around you, the society. I mean, society cannot move without faith. You are sitting here today. And you have the faith that your car is outside and will be safe, right? Well, there is also an aspect of, of reason, of, of, of causality, of probability, probability. Uh, that, that assures me that there is a reasonable chance that when I go out of here, uh, the car will be there. Yeah, that, that, is, that is faith itself, faith in the structure, in the society, and faith in something governing the whole universe, a law, or you call it God, or a spirit, some unknown power in this whole universe, which is guiding all the happening, a faith in that. But if there is this, this God and there is this power, uh, you know, it is the eternal question, is this uh, the God, a power working towards uh, happiness? Is it working towards the, the betterment of, of, of human beings? Uh, and if so, if there is a God in heaven, why do we see so much suffering? You know, if you ask a dancer, what is the goal of your dance, what they would say? It is the ecstasy, the process of surrender. There is no goal to a dance. Dance itself is an act. Itself is joy, itself is happiness. 
there is no end to it. You know, when we are reasoning it, we often think about some end product. So your focus is on the goal. That's why here in India we always thought that uh, the creation is a leela, means it's a play, it's a game, where every step is celebration, every step is joy, every step is love manifestation. How would you explain that to the people who are victims of drought in Gujarat? What would you say to them uh, in this sort of philosophical vision of, of leela and play and surrender? You know, there is no point in talking philosophy at that time. This is an understanding which gives you strength. And I cannot go and explain to a person who is in need of a glass of water, come watch dance or see a movie. He says, first give me a piece of bread and butter to eat. I am so tired, I cannot watch a movie now. Right? So, but that does not mean that uh, our whole universe is limited to bread, butter and jam. So, when what is needed to a person, that moment that need to be given. Just to go back to, to, to the issue of values, um, uh, you know, we, we, we tend to have a, a notion in, in that in our education system that in some ways values can be taught, that you put it into the curriculum and, 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 and the young will develop values. How do you go about uh, this paradigm shift in values. I see informal education is more effective in uh, bringing about the values. Anything you put in curriculum, you know, it loses its effectiveness in some way. This is our practical experience. Right? But if something comes as an extracurricular activity, children seem to envisage more interest in it and they take it uh, more to their heart. <laughs> but isn't it a question of, 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 of children then being exposed to, to people like you who are, who are embodiments of value? And, uh, you, you can have a teacher who, who has no sense of commitment to values, you know, who is teaching the value of, of a commitment to truth, of compassion or what have you, when he doesn't embody it. It's not effective then. <laughs> You know, much of your um, uh, work has, uh, has also you know, been in the area of, um, of, of prisons, uh, working with prisoners uh, who are sort of, you know, the condemned, isolated members of the community. Uh, how has that interaction, that, that interface been uh, with, with people rejected, in a sense, by society? Uh, you know, this prison work has been very, very um, satisfying. This prison work has been very touching, very satisfactory. Because these people have been told, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't be this way. But nobody ever taught how not to feel that rage, anger or hatred, when it comes up in that. There was no outlet, there was no method taught to them to release these negative emotions from the system. So with these uh, breathing techniques and, you know, relaxation, meditation and all, they are able to let go of those and renew their mental energy, their emotional energy. That, uh, you know, many times, many prisoners say that, um, uh, Guruji, you are responsible for me being in the prison. Mm -hmm. so had you had taught us this uh, some years ago, perhaps you wouldn't have landed up here. <laughs> so I take responsibility for that. You know, also that uh, given the, 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 the cyclical view of, of history that we have in our tradition, uh, of this, the sense of the expansiveness of time, of eons, uh, it isn't really just this lifetime that, that, that we confront or, 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 or experience or, or enjoy or suffer, uh, depending on your, 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 your mental state. Um, uh, as, 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 as a spiritual master working for the community, uh, do you do this as, as a part of your own uh, evolution, your own karma? Uh, do you feel substantially that, uh, that your interventions, that your help, that your inspiration, that your leadership uh, will make a difference? Or is it just the maya, the flow of time, and, and you play yourself out in it too? I would say that's it. We are play our part. It's a whole happening phenomenon. 
and like you know you are not any different from a tree a rock a, a tree stands there rock exists so you in a big picture you see the whole thing as one organism so there is no i do something since you are hollow and empty when you relax totally let go then spontaneously actions come to you so you don't need to you know put an intention in you i need to be compassionate to so and so no you act through your nature which is compassion or to call it love or whatever and if you are frustrated agitated stressed then your nature will be anger do you have any intention for yourself uh, i have no intention no <laughs> do you have any um aspiration goal to be a better human being uh, do you feel you've transcended humanness in some ways uh i don't label myself of anything whatsoever you know i don't say i have transcended the humanness or nothing i'm i'm just here yeah. i'm available to whatever situation and whatever i can do there. Somebody thank you very much this is very great. Lesson.